<laughs> All right, guys, how are you doing? With winter coming now and it's getting a bit cold outside, I want something to play with indoors. And I've had this little thing here for about 18 months now. Brilliant little crawler. I've been using it for a year now, or just over. But I've lost a charger, and you can't buy a spare charger for it. But I've got another one kicking about, a whole car. So I'm going to do a little unboxing again. I'm going to do a little review again, let you know how I've got on with this in the past 18 months. All right, so let's get started with the size of this thing. Um, it says on the box it's 190 millimeters long. So just to put a few things next to it, just so you can sort of judge the size of it. Here's my hand. Here's a glass bottle of Coke. Here's a fidget spinner. And Sharpie pen. So hopefully that you can kind of sort of get the get a rough idea of how big this thing is. All right, so I'm going to start off with some of the pros and cons of this little thing. Things that I like about it, it's nice and small, perfect for some indoor off-road action in the winter. It's got four-wheel steer, and you can change that independently on the remote control. There's four different steering modes that you can have. It's got a really long run time. I would say I haven't actually timed it, but you're looking at over an hour easily. And it's, it's re it really is pretty durable, guys. I mean, the only thing that I've broken since I've had it was one of these prop shafts or drive lines, what you might call it in America. And that was because I had it tangled up in my bed duvet and I kept the power on and then it just kept going and then it snapped it off. So I replaced that, really cheap, really easy to put back on. And ever since then, I've, it's popped off a couple of times. You know, I've blocked the black wheels up and I've kept the power on, it's just sort of pinged off. But nothing's broke, I've managed to sort of ping it back on again. Alright, so let's go into the weak spots then. It is pretty slow. I mean, I don't know really if you can say that's a weak spot, because it is a crawler, they're not really supposed to be fast. But if it was a little bit faster, that would be nice. Uh, the drive shafts, I mean these, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't say that's a fault. It's probably good that these break, because if this didn't break, then there might be something else inside that's going to give. And it's so much easier just to replace one of these. There's literally two screws, and you can swap that over and put a new one on. If you started tearing up diffs, axles, something in the main gearbox, that would be a lot harder to replace. So, definitely, these shafts here, I wouldn't say is a weak spot. But, in here, look, it might be a little bit tricky to see on camera. In there, it's like a dog bone drive shaft. And what happened to this over time, and actually on every single corner, on all four, the little pin inside the shaft came loose and it started falling out. And that was jamming up the axles. And a little, easy little fix what I've done there, you just put a tiny little dab of super glue on there, or CA glue, and that sorted it out. The other con, it's got a built-in battery. The battery's built inside this thing. It is replaceable, but you've literally you've got to open the whole thing up, change the battery, put it back together. So that's a bit of a nuisance. It would have been a lot better if you could just change the battery, put another one in, shut the lid and keep going, and then use a normal charger. And that brings me on to the next thing that I don't like about it, is the actual charger. I mean, you plug it in there, then you plug it in the wall, and that's it. There's nothing on there that tells you that it's charging, nothing on there to tell you that it's charged. Nothing, you're just guessing. You're just plugging it in, you're leaving it on charge for about an hour, and you're just hoping for the best and there's no light or nothing at all to let you know what, what's even going on so i would say that's a bit of a con all right so to charge up the battery it says here to plug it in charging time is around two hours it says do not charge the battery unattended so yep yeah, that's you shouldn't do that with any batteries guys do not overcharge the battery failure to do so will shorten the life of the battery well how do you know you're overcharging it i mean it says charging time is around two hours so, uh, I don't know, what do you do? Just put it in for exactly two hours when it's flat? And then the last con, I would say, is the switch here. I mean, when the body off, that's really easy to get to. No problem at all. But when you've got the body on, a bit of a nuisance trying to get in there so you can turn that off. I mean, you can, you can get some and you can reach in there and you can switch it on and off quite easily. Alright, so, obviously we've got our car, comes with a transmitter, with all your different driving modes on there, the charger, and an adapter so you can use it in Europe, instruction books, and they're pretty good because if you look through here, it shows exploded diagrams of how this whole thing's put together, and if ever you need any spare parts, you can get all the bits on here that you could possibly need for it, apart from the charger. This is the only thing that you can't buy, that, as far as I know, as you know, because I lost my original one, so I've been looking everywhere to see if I can find one, and I just can't find one. 
So my only option was, was to buy another car. So guys, don't lose this charger. And lastly, the sticker sheet. I don't think I'm going to bother with these, because here's the old crawler. And as you can see, look, they don't stay on. Just fall straight off. Look, the bumper's falling off. So, and I think it looks pretty good without them on there anyway. It doesn't need any of that lot on there. Looks pretty decent anyway. Alright, so, all you need to get it going, you need three AAA batteries for the transmitter. And you've got to put this thing on charge for a little while. And look guys, there's like nothing on there to tell you that's charging. There's nothing on there, there's no light. I mean, if I had a little red and a green light on there, just so you know what's going on, that would, that would have been so much better. Alright, so since I've had this, I've done a couple of little upgrades. The first one is, I'll just drop the body down a little bit. And that's really easy, because all you've got to do is just take these pins out here, and then the body will drop all the way down. And by the way, I don't even bother running the pins, because every time you want to charge it up or turn it on and off, you've got to pull these pins out. And look, it holds on there anyway, so there really isn't any need to put the body pins in. The other modification was, it, it, steers, it didn't really steer that far, it only went sort of about that far. So, I took the little ball joint out here, look, see that's up on the, on the um, inner hole here. And if you look on this one, I moved that ball joint down onto the, onto the lower one. And what that does, it just gives you a little bit more steering. And I've done the same thing there, front and rear. And that's pretty much it. Apart from that, it's fully standard. Alright, so you've got your four steering modes. Mode one is just front steering. Mode two, four wheel steer. And that's just so you can get a much tighter turning circle. Mode three is like a crab. So both the front and the rear, both steer in the same direction, so it doesn't actually... Ugh. <laughs> it doesn't actually steer at all, it just makes it crab. And then the last mode... That's just rear steer only. I'll tell you what, the other thing what I really like about this crawler, guys, a Hobby King do a small crawler, and it's got the motors mounted on the actual axles, whilst this one is like a proper 4x4, it's got the proper prop shafts here, and it's got the motor and the gearbox inside the actual chassis. And I really do like that. On the Turnergy ones, I've got the motors mounted up here somewhere, and it's just not quite as realistic. And also, guys, if you're thinking which one to buy, definitely, without a doubt, this one. I've had a go on the Turnergy one. My buddy's got one. And the gears strip so easy. One tiny little thing, and it's going to strip all the gears inside here. And on this thing, it really does take a lot to break one of these. So definitely, guys, I know these cost a little bit more, but for the price, definitely 100%, I'd go with this. Here in UK, and probably I think the rest of Europe, they call this thing the FTX Ibex. And for you guys over in America, and I don't know where else in the world, probably China and stuff, it's called a HBX Devastator. But it's exactly the same thing, guys. Alright, well let's set up a little track and have a little play. <laughs> Alright, so I've just got my little track built, so we're going to start off here down by the start line. First of all, we're going to start off with going over this steep incline. We're looking at about a 45 degree slope here, going up this pit mat onto a different one. Over this mound and over the telephone. As we get over the telephone, we've then got to navigate our way over this barcode reader and a couple of rolls of sticky stuff, keyboard, and then up this next incline, which we're probably looking at about another 45 degrees. And from there we go over this printer, onto this franking machine and onto the legendary TRX4 with, with the Chevy 66 body on it. And from there we've got to make our way over around here and over, over this Hyper VS, onto the Rustler, through the gate and over this drill section. We've got these Devolt drills here and from here we have to make it onto this little helicopter box, round the corner, over this tight little bridge here where we've got some pricing guns, bog roll, couple of boxes, over a Traxxas TRX thingy majig radio, over the fidget spinners, hot glue gun and across the line. Alright guys, are you ready? Go! And we're up the slope, 45 degree incline here guys, it's gripping really well. No problems over that, over the telephone. And on to our next 45 degree slope. It's a 
amazing how slow you can go with this, guys. You can really crawl, crawl it, go really slow, really controlled, really precise. And the sort of obstacles it can get over, guys. It's amazing for a little thing like this. That four-wheel steer and the extra steering really helping out here a lot, guys. A lot of these crawlers that have only got front steer wouldn't be possible. Come on, Ibex. You can do it. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is it game over? Is it stuck? Oh, no. We've recovered. Making it look easy, guys. Check it out. Almost at the end now. Can't quite make the bog roll. Uh, 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 nah, maybe not. Barging it out the way. All right, this bit is going to be pretty tricky, I think, guys. We've got a tight turn, we've got to try and get it up onto this box. Just hanging the wheel off the edge there. Come on, Ibex. Oh, and he does it. That was a lot easier than expected, guys. Just coming into our home little straight now. Just over the fidget spinners and, and, and across the line. Alright guys, so as you can see, brilliant fun this little crawler. I mean, if it wouldn't, wouldn't be for the charger, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. So for that reason only, I'm going to have to give it a 9 out of 10. But if you had like a couple of these, you can see how much fun it would be, especially around Christmas. You've got your family together and you've got a couple of these going around. You could build a track in your living room, build a little track and sort of have some competitions with all your buddies and your family and stuff like that. I mean, I really enjoyed myself. You know what they say, growing old is mandatory, growing up is optional. And I don't want to grow up. I'm having plenty of fun still being a big kid. So, all right, guys, hope you liked that video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, smash that bell button to stay notified, and see you soon, guys.